Guys, inflation is at a 40-year high yet again, coming in at 9.1%. We are all feeling the pinch from the grocery store to the gas stations. It is affecting the daily buying power for all of us, and it's hard to see it not affecting the housing market. Now, I've made multiple videos in the past on how this has made an impact on the housing market for buyers and for sellers. But in this video, I want to focus on what to do if you're a real estate investor in this sort of market. Because the investor in this market is facing plenty of headwinds that may foreshadow what the rest of the housing market will be in the near future. But first, before I get started, you guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jay Costa. I'm a real estate investor and agent here in northern New Jersey. And if you get any value out of this video at all, as always, smash that like button down below. Appreciate it. And now on to the video. Now, as I just said, I am a real estate estate investor here in northern New Jersey, as well as an agent. So I am both constantly looking for deals, as well as studying the market, both investment side, as well as home buyer side. And I'll tell you what, finding a good deal is tough right now. A year ago, we were looking about two and a half to 3% interest rates, and now we are close to 6%. That has decreased buyer's purchasing power substantially. With prices still at or near all-time highs, this has killed buyer demand simply because they cannot afford or cannot even qualify for mortgages at these levels. This is especially true with gas prices at $5 a gallon and when the cost of living essentials and needs is going up what seems like every day. But what does this mean for real estate investors? Well, as stated, the buyer demand is down drastically because of the interest rates, among other things. But when you're dealing with a home buyer looking to purchase a home for themselves and their family, you're dealing with a bit of an emotional situation. They either need or really, really want a home to buy and to live for a long time and raise their family. Sometimes you can't put a price on that for some people. And some will overpay, even with these higher interest rates, in order to get into a home that they love and get their family and kids into a neighborhood and a school district that they're looking to be in. This is, of course, not the case for investors. Investors use deal analysis and comparable properties in order to put a value on a property they want to purchase. There's no family involved and there's no emotion and decision. Well, there shouldn't be anyway. And right now, at these current interest rate levels, it is extremely hard to find a good investment property. Whether you want to buy and hold, you want to fix and flip, or a short, buy a short-term rental, they're all getting harder to justify the price. This is because if you're purchasing a property as an investor, you're looking at the comparable property sold six months to a year prior. And the problem is that's when interest rates were at 3%. But now that interest rates are close to 6%, any investor worth their salt is going to realize that they can't pay what was being paid a year or six months ago. Or else simply the numbers don't work. The main problem is sellers are still stubborn and have been reluctant to drop their prices, at least for now. So with investors largely out of the market, as well as home buyer demand completely crippled because of the interest rates and higher cost of living, property sellers of all all types will eventually have to see the writing on the wall and drop the asking prices of their property. We have to see property values start to go down in order to move forward and correct from the artificially, I would say, inflated housing market of the last two years. Now, how much property values could or should drop is anyone's guess, but I've always had a theory that once it's clear that home values are starting to decrease, how many sellers are gonna to try to chase the market and put their home up for sale, trying to get those all-time high values and not being able to get it? You could see how it could snowball very quickly into a much higher inventory market and a much stronger buyer's market. So here are my tips if you're a real estate investor. Depending on what type of investor you are, my advice will differ. First, buy and hold rental investors. If you're a long-term buy and hold investor, you should still definitely be actively looking for deals. The current fear and market sentiment may give you opportunity that you have not had in quite some time, but make sure your numbers work. I know it's easier said than done, but start making offers that are lower than what the asking price is if the asking price doesn't make sense. Buy and hold investors are probably the only type of real estate investors that may come out slightly unscathed in this sort of market that we're seeing coming up. And here's why. Since the purchasing power for a home buyer has been crippled significantly because of the rising interest rates, less and less home buyers are able to afford a home to buy. So what does that mean? More renters. Many economists believe that the rental market is only going to get stronger from here. And that would make sense given what we know. 
but that relies on a strong job market and a strong economy. If we end up hitting a recession and people start getting laid off of their jobs, the demand for rentals still may be high, but the lack of ability to pay may be an issue. Second is Burr Investors. If you don't know, Burr, B-R-R-R-R, -R -R, stands for buy rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. This is my favorite way to get into a buy and hold property, but it's very dependent on stable interest rates, and the interest rate situation has been anything but stable. If you are a Burr investor, you may have to shift your focus for a while. Some Burr investors already got caught with their pants down, buying a property right before the rates increased, depending on a low refi rate, and now that the low refi rates are gone, they are stuck between a rock and a hard place, and most of the time have been forced to sell instead of buying and holding. Third is flippers. Now, if you've been a flipper the last two years, the housing market has been extremely generous and extremely forgiving to all of you. Even if you completely overpaid for a property and had no idea what you were doing, you still most likely ended up ahead based on market appreciation and just pretty much luck. If you're a flipper, you need to be very careful going forward in this market. In fact, if you're flipping homes at a high level, you may wanna reduce the amount of jobs that you have going on in order to reduce your risk in the short to medium term. Maybe start focusing more on buy and hold properties or even get into real estate wholesaling, which is when you get a property under contract and you assign that contract to a different investor at a higher price and you profit the difference. This assumes almost no risk when compared to flipping a home because flipping a home you have to put a lot of money into it and you're into the property and your money's into the property for anywhere for three to six months and who knows where we're going to be three to six months from now simply put you cannot be buying property as a home flipper right now relying on selling the property based on all-time high values if you do it you'll get burnt and lastly is short-term rental investors admittedly i am not an expert in short-term rentals or airbnb rentals at all but in an environment where everyone's paycheck is getting pinched left and right and people start to struggle to pay their basic needs and necessities common sense would tell you that vacation rentals and traveling are going to be the first things to come off of the budget and that they will not be getting the same demand that they have been the past two years going forward so what i would suggest if you're a short-term rental investor is you can keep looking for properties but base that analysis on the property on being a long-term rental because you need to make sure that worst case you can end up getting a long-term one year or more tenant into the property and still come out okay. If the property does not work as a long-term rental, don't do it. I don't care how much money you think you can get per night on a short-term rental. Don't rely on lagging data. So in conclusion, whether you're a brand new real estate investor or a seasoned one, keep looking for deals, but be patient. And realize that the past two years of all-time low interest rates are over and we're gonna start paying the price for that coming soon. You will need to shift your strategy to keep making money and building wealth in real estate. And the good news is now is a great time to get started because even though you may not find a deal right away, there will be opportunities that come in front of you that were not there the past two years in an overcrowded market. We will soon see the difference between investors that were smart with their money and their investments compared to the ones that over levered because the ones that over levered and relied on all time high appreciation to continue are going to get burnt, leaving you there to take advantage of the opportunity. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Where's the housing market going from here for real estate investors? Are you a real estate investor? What is your strategy the past two years and how are you changing it going forward? Let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you next time.